Hello, beautiful beings. Today, I want to talk about meditation and that inner peace that we feel. How do we sustain that inner peace when we go out into our lives? So we did a live stream yesterday and someone had asked that question. How do I take the peace I feel in my meditation and keep having it throughout my day? So I want to dive deep into this topic because I think it's one that we can all really relate to and really could use some support around, right? So meditation is such an amazing tool and we can get to such a deep state of peace when we're in our meditation. So today we're going to talk about how, sustain, how to sustain that. My name is Rebecca Abraxas. Thanks for tuning in and remembering your greatness here with me. This uh, channel is all about awakening, to who we really are and sustaining high frequencies, raising our vibration and sustaining them. So if you're not part of the tribe, be sure to subscribe and click that bell. We go live every Friday as a tribe. All right, so meditation. You are in your bliss, right? And then you walk out the door and somehow get in a fight with your partner, your kids drive you crazy, right? Or you go to work and you're like, you know, shit hits the fan. What is that? Have you ever felt that? I know I have. I want to dive in. This is there's about five things that I want to go into. The first thing is go to your meditation without any expectation. Okay. It's nice that you're feeling peaceful in your meditation, but don't go to it expecting that. The meditation practice is basically to be with yourself, to be with all of you. Every thought, every belief, every energy, everything, just to sit with all of it. And the object of meditation is not necessarily to clear your mind, but just to be with your mind and be with all of you, okay? Um, eventually, if you stick with the practice, you create this bridge over to this part of you that's been always there. And so if you sit with yourself long enough, day after day, all of a sudden you get to know that deeper sense of yourself, that deeper peace. But don't go to your meditation expecting it. And don't go to your meditation expecting that this is going to fix the day, okay? That's just setting yourself up for failure and disaster and not allowing yourself to really be present with what is, okay? So that's number one. Number two is meditation is an awareness tool. You sit there to become more aware and to really just listen and be, okay? So when we practice listening and being, that is what we start to get really good at. And number three is it's not a magic pill. It's a journey. It's a process. It's a process over years. Okay. So start now, <laughs> but this awareness tool, this is how you start to bring peace into your day by listening, by growing awareness, by being present. So when you practice that, you become that out in your day because what you practice, you become. And so when you walk into your day with feeling peaceful and stuff, then you start to notice. You listen, you be, you create awareness around your day. So all of a sudden, someone in your day starts getting snarky or something's rubbing you. Notice it, okay? Now, in the past, we might react to it, right? We might react without thinking about it at all. We might react in a big way. Well, with the meditation practice, you might go out there and you might have a slight pause before reacting. That is progress. <laughs> uh, you might react anyway, but maybe there was a pause. And eventually you'll get to the pause and say, oh, what is this? And you start learning about your triggers. And then you bring your triggers to your meditation pillow. You start this process of pausing, listening, becoming aware. Um, so, you know, our shadows come up, we get triggered, past beliefs come up, 
You know, when we're on our meditation pillow, we become aware of all of that. And then we get into the laboratory of our, our life happening. And it's kind of exciting. It's, re it's really um, fun to start noticing this stuff that we kind of were aware of in our meditation. Then we're like, oh, there it is. There it is. So the peace that you feel in your meditation will come into your day when you're willing to be present with your triggers, with your beliefs, with your trauma. Okay, when you're willing to be present with it there and be present with it there and grow awareness around it and you start healing this way. And underneath the reactions and underneath that presence is the sense of peace that grows and it grows exponentially. The more you're willing to be with it, have it, right? That's number two. Number three is that even though you've cultivated peace on your meditation pillow, it's not necessarily the energy that's out there because the way the law of vibration works is you have to be something and the more you be it, the more you expand it, okay? So, when you walk out of your meditation, you're living kind of a past reality, energetic reality. The law of vibration and law of attraction is not instantaneous. So even though you're feeling totally aligned with peace, you're like, oh, I should just be experiencing peace. You know, like attracts like. But what were you a few years ago? What were you last week? That's kind of what's happening out there. So it feels like there's a contrast, but you just have to catch up. That's all. Catching up with the present moment. So I can't even tell you how many times I've been to retreats and then come home and my, my two boys are just about driving me crazy. And I'm like, how could this be? I just cultivated so much peace and I did so much inner growth. Well, that hasn't, the, the, the present moment hasn't caught up with that because it's actually, the, the present's almost a past moment energetically. So don't let that discourage you, okay? Keep meditating, keep creating those peaceful moments and do your best in the field of life to pause before your reactivity. Pause and then grow into a response instead of reactivity. Pause, take a breath and create awareness around the situation. This is all a process and create and sustaining inner peace will come. Okay, so number four is how do you sustain that peaceful feeling? Well, it's a vibration. So this is a little trick I do and I really love this practice. Make a somatic marker of your inner peace. So you're on your meditation pillow, you've totally cultivated that inner peace. You've done it, oh my gosh, it's so juicy and yummy and you love it. So from there, I want you just to feel it, put that intention of frequency into your sound. So just sound out, Ooh. I call this the somatic vortex marker or tone because now you're making this mark of this frequency. So when you go out there into the field of life and you're feeling a rub and you're feeling the contrast and you're feeling your inner peace drop, then you can visit that sound. And all of a sudden, it's like the peace washes over you again. It's really magical. But again, not a magic pill because you have to build this up, okay? Just like mantra in the science of yoga, right? Um, you have to build up the energetic potency of it. So do it every day after your meditation. Feel the peace that you're feeling. Make that somatic vocal marker, okay? Use it every day. It'll get more and more potent, I promise, the more you use it. Uh, this has been my experience, and I, I really think this is really powerful. And I actually have a course called Vocal Toning, for manifesting where I teach all these processes around how your voice can help you manage the gap from that inner peace um, down to that frustration or reactivity. There's this gap in vibration and that's why you're uncomfortable. How do you get back up here to inner peace? And I show you how to do that with vocal toning, with your own voice. So make sure you check out the descriptions below. I have the link in there for my course.
the fifth thing I want to talk about is use the opportunity. So this awareness that you're having around, oh, I'm not peaceful anymore. That is really good information. That's like great work, like A plus. <laughs> You've noticed when you're not peaceful. That awareness is key. So what I like to do, another practice I like to do is I like to ask some questions. Huh, what just happened? What is this? How old am I being? What's light about this I'm not getting? You know, does this belief or reaction still work for me? So we want to get into what this trigger is. What dropped us from pe feeling peaceful? And most likely, it's an old habit. It's an old belief system. It's something we've made important in the past. It's something um, from a long time ago. That's why we ask, how old am I being? These are awareness questions that will really open the funnel to help you see uh, what needs to be updated in your psyche, in your subconscious. And so all of this is a process. The meditation doesn't stop when you get off your meditation pillow. If you're, if you're living a conscious life, you're gonna take that moment of listening and being present, and you're gonna take it into the field of your life. You're gonna keep that meditation going. And just like in meditation, huh, oh, there's an interesting thought. Oh, that's interesting awareness. Oh, that's coming up, great. And then in the lab of life, you ask the next few questions. Hmm, how old am I being? What is this? Is this still serving me? Is this an old habit? Is this someone else's? Sometimes as sensitive beings, we can be picking up on other people's reactivity and moods, right? Thoughts, feelings, and emotion. Ask the question, is this even mine? <laughs> what the heck is this? Get curious. So that's number five. Let's just, you want to really, really get curious about all this and have fun with it. Don't compartmentalize your life okay like this is my spiritual life spiritual time this is my work time this is my family time compartmentalizing never really works okay you have a systemic life everything is feeding everything okay your spiritual nature and your spiritual practice does not end with your morning practice it doesn't end with your evening affirmations you are a spiritual, energetic, vibrational being having an experience. And you're that vibrational being all the time, okay? So do not compartmentalize. That's another key to keeping, keeping this sense of peace. And that first awareness is that you're not in peace anymore. There's a gap and you wanna manage that gap. And how do you come back up? while still living with relationships and work and old programming that's not working anymore. Old programming most likely is something that you picked up from a parent or a teacher in your life as a little kid that seemed like a good idea to, to uh, you know, mimic because, you know, to a young kid, like, oh, life seems to be working for them. I better do it this way kind of thing. And that's cool. That's smart. Great. But now you're your own self. You get to choose if that's still working for you. You know, most likely it's not because every generation knows a little bit more than the next um, in your family. So really upgrade what you took from your parents, you know, have gratitude for the, the light stuff and start to just let go of the heavy stuff. Cause most likely I know I've got some heavy stuff that I passed on to my kids and I hope to God they get the awareness to let that go. <laughs> so I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, which aspect was your favorite one that you're going to really, um, take in, you know, was, did anything really speak to you? Let me know in the comments. So guys, creating inner peace systemically in your life, sustaining that, it is possible, but it's a progress. It's a, it's a process. You're creating the bridge and I encourage you to keep living by creating the bridge. Keep living with this daily practice. It gets more and more 
potent and you grow the energy of inner peace. You grow it and you grow it. I promise. I promise you, because I have lived this. I have lived reactivity. I have lived sheer density and intensity and depression. And now at 50, um, most of my life, most of my day, days are lived in, in inner peace. And so I promise you, stick with it. And all of a sudden one day you'll be like, wow, like it's happened. It'll just become commonplace. Your contentment and your inner peace will be so ordinary that all of a sudden you'll have to be like, oh, oh, it's, it's happening. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So beautiful people. I hope you'll join us on Fridays. We go live with the tribe. And uh, if you need any support, please go to RebeccaAbraxas.com. I've got lots of ways to support you on there. Go to my store and you can see my courses, my email programs, any type of coaching. And um, okay, beautiful being, good luck in the field, in the laboratory of life. Inner peace is possible. Namaste.